Sandbaggers Case Files, a look back at the best spy show you've never heard of. It wouldn't be a Sandbaggers opening without a long walk, and tonight's episode, The Most Suitable Person, delivers. But this time, it's not Neil Burnside doing the walking. It's an unknown man in a trench coat who looks around furtively before stepping into a psychiatrist's office. Back at SIS headquarters, Kane convinces Burnside to let him visit the field school, where people go to learn how to become intelligence officers to find replacements for their two recently deceased sandbaggers. Follett, the director, tells Willie they don't have any sandbagger material, except, maybe, what about Laura Dickens? Is she specialized? Fieldwork, French and German. How did she do on a pack? High marks, several specialist courses, fast driving, parachuting, things like mm, that. Mm. Bionic woman. Her name's Laura Dickens. Well, there's never been a woman in the sandbaggers before. I've no one else. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Burnside ain't gonna like it. But with no other options, Burnside agrees to at least interview her. Jeff Ross, the CIA's perpetually rumpled London station chief, pays Burnside a visit to ask him about Colin Grove, a fellow in SIS's mission planning department who is keen to become a sandbagger. Constant and regular access. NATO top secret and equivalent. US, UK eyes only. What are you getting at? Neil, does he handle CIA derived material? Well, I expect so. He's in mission planning. Why? Do you know that he's been seeing a psychiatrist? Hey, it was a different time. To keep Grove under a watchful eye, Burnside sends him to Helsinki, baiting him with the promise of being considered for the special section when he returns. Meanwhile, in a back alley in Gibraltar, a policeman stumbles on a body under a pile of trash and with a bullet hole in his chest. A detective going through the man's wallet recognizes his name. It's the number two man in the SIS's Morocco station. No one seems to know how he ended up under a pile of trash in a back alley in Gibraltar, but since no one knew he was there, he obviously left Tangier in a hurry. Burnside wants to send Kane to Gibraltar to investigate. C approves, but since there is some question about whether SIS or its rival MI5 has jurisdiction over Gibraltar, C decides to take advice. Meanwhile, send Kane in anticipation of approval. I'll draft a note straight away. Oh, I think even our efficient secretariat can make mistakes, Matthew. Sir? Second class post will do nicely. Over a walking lunch, Jeff Ross updates Burnside on his surveillance of Grove. It seems our mystery psychiatrist, who's Hungarian, has developed a specialty, people who work for the Foreign Office and the Ministry of Defense. After lunch, Laura Dickens drops by for an interview, but she tells Burnside that she doesn't want to be a sandbagger because she sees it as like playing cowboys and Indians. Burnside surprises her by saying that's exactly what he's looking for someone who's not in it for the glamour. Intrigued, Dickens agrees to sign on temporarily, until a permanent replacement can be found. Who's that girl? Her name's Laura Dickens. I think she's just given me an interview. Oh, for what? She's joining the special section. When I mean, you're putting a girl into the sandbaggers? Yes. I run a very democratic directorate. In Gibraltar, Kane meets with Deputy Chief Inspector Gomez and asks him to put the word out that he's in town picking up where the dead man left off. Back in London, during another walk around the park with Burnside, Ross cops to breaking and entering into the psychiatrist's office where the CIA learned that Grove is being treated for a drinking problem. At least, that's what his file says. It's confession time. Burnside goes to sea to reveal the Colin Grove situation. Will SIS have to bring in MI5 to vet all their employees for other leaks? It's a terrifying prospect. Back in Gibraltar, Kane's plan begins to pay off. While he's out walking around taking in the sights, he picks up a tail. Suddenly... <laughs> K 
Kane's day only gets worse when he's then visited by a smarmy MI5 agent who claims SIS is trampling on his turf. The two don't hit it off, to say the least, and the MI5 guy promises to send a nasty gram about Kane's behavior to his bosses. As if that wasn't enough, when Kane goes for a drive later, someone starts shooting at him. But hey, at least it took his mind off that MI5 jerk. I better go and see to your car. Oh, look, don't bother. I'll put it straight into the garage. Oh, yeah, well, I'll clean it up first. Hmm? I was sick in it. Burnside sends Dickens to Tangier to try and track down the other end of the mystery. She, Kane, and Burnside spend many hours alone in their separate rooms, gradually assembling the pieces of the puzzle. And once they get all the pieces in place, they can finally see the big picture. A terrorist plans to shoot down an airliner with the governor of Gibraltar on board as revenge for the death of two of his fellow terrorists. The next morning, Burnside confronts Grove, who has been recalled from Helsinki to answer for his suspicious behavior. Grove tells Burnside that he's got it all wrong. Groves had met the psychiatrist socially and had noticed his odd choice in clientele, and he decided to run his own investigation to prove that he was sandbagger material. As proof, he tells Burnside that he had reported all this to a friend of his in MI5, but he didn't believe him. Burnside is not impressed with Groves' display of initiative. I nearly call in MI5 because of you. Put this whole place under a microscope. The CIA found out about you. That could have cost us the special relationship. Both my sandbaggers are in the med, operating on blown covers. There have been two attempts on Kane's life, and at any moment, an airliner full of people could be blown to hell. I couldn't concentrate on all this because I was too worried about you. And you thought you were qualified for a sandbagger? I said I'm sorry, sir. Get out. All ends well, though, as the police charge the terrorists just before they fire their rocket at the plane carrying the governor. And thanks to Grove's confession, Burnside even gets the last word over MI5. It's happened, though. What's happened? MI5 have fired the first shot. Did you know that Kane had clashed in Gibraltar with a man called Jackson? Well, Willie obviously didn't think it worth reporting. Jackson did. Well, I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. I do! And if MI5 are going to start... Are they going to be keeping very quiet in the immediate future? We're about to hand them a spy ring. What? Which has been operating under their noses. And which, moreover, an SIS officer reported to MI5 eight months ago. Well, that's marvellous. Mm. Isn't it? It's mission accomplished for the sandbaggers, but will Laura Dickens change her mind about staying in the special section? In the next episode, Dickens must romance an Arab prince to find out why he's planning a coup, a coup that Wellingham is determined to support over Burnside's strong objections. That's next time on The Sandbaggers Case Files.